Hey everybody, it's Josh. Just wanted to let you know that this episode was recorded on location in the Cave of Wonders. Yeah, let's go with that. Scanning. Identity authorized. Welcome to the Secret Superhero Club Podcast Network. Welcome to the Animation Station Podcast, your home for discussions and debates about all things animation. Each week, we'll rank, review, and revel in animated shows from yesterday and today, and from around the world. So grab your Acme slingshot, set your mobile suit to autopilot, and put on your mouse ears. The Animation Station Podcast begins now. So, um, you liked California, right? California. Yeah, it was great. It was like, it was like the OC, like, California. We were in the OC. California. It was awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. And we're going to talk about it on our bonus episode. We are going to talk about it on the bonus episode. All the fun D23 and Disneyland things we did. But, you know what we're going to talk about this week? I do. We're going to talk about, well, that was not a very good way to intro, but welcome to the Animation Station Podcast. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) Episode 52. The One Year Capper. Yeah. Yep. My name is Josh. I'm Gavin. I apologize for any sniffles that happen in here. I am... He came back to Oklahoma and got slammed into the wall of allergens. So yeah. the air we I, I think here. it's I think it's Oliver got some too. I think it may be mm-hmm. like a con thing too. Maybe. Yeah. Exposed to lots of Yeah. Cause I mean it's not like it's not bad like Pax Pox. But Pax Pox? Yeah. What's the Penny that? Arcade Expo, like when the first couple of years that they had the uh Pax is what's Penny Arcade okay. Expo. Uh-huh. Um there was this thing it was Pax Pox. So like a bunch of people got sick. So, is because everybody's like handling loose change yep. and um, game cabinet buttons. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. A lot of, and that's a lot of sweaty nerds. Sure. I, I will say for this one, I didn't. It's not like going to like RTX or Dallas Comic Con or anything like that, mm-hmm. where you'll go and you can smell ripeness. Right. There was not any of that here. Right. I mean, there may have been a little bit, like when we were standing outside. But again, that's when we were standing outside since five for five hours right. in the sun. Yeah. So, I mean, that happens, but mm-hmm. yeah, wasn't there, there was no, I wasn't like walking through D23 and be like, Oh my God, shower. That never <laughs> happened. People may have said that about us on our first day since our shower was out of commission. Yeah. What, what happened to our shower, Gavin? Oh my gosh. So first off, Josh took a shower <laughs> Everything totally fine. You didn't touch that one door. No, I did not. So it's, there's there's glass sliding doors um, on this bathtub shower, and Josh went in and out of the left door. Are you the type that steps into the shower and then turns it on? No. Oh, okay. So you did it beforehand. Yeah. Oh, but you I let it. I around. Yeah. I well, no. I I pulled the thing over, uh-huh. and I opened the deal. I mean, I, I turned the faucet on, mm-hmm. and I was just like do 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 do. I wait for it to get warm, uh-huh. and then I flip it. Flip it, yeah, and then I jump in. Right, but to do that, did you open the right hand side door? No, I went to the left. Okay, because I'm not gonna get in next to the toilet. No, no, no. I'm not talking about getting in. I'm talking about reaching in to turn the faucet on. Oh no, I, I never, right I never do that. I always do that on the left hand side. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. So I pulled open the right-hand side door to start the shower, doing the same thing to let it warm up before I jump in. And the glass door was not on its track, and it slipped off of the top of the bathtub rim, and it shattered into 12 million pieces in the middle of the night. It was awesome. In it was... this Airbnb, which is in the back end of this house, with this whole family sleeping on the other side of the wall. I mean, I was to be shock. fair, it was only like midnight. It was like 1130, yeah. And by the time, because I, I started messaging the owner, I was like, ah, we had a little mishap in the bathroom. There's glass everywhere. 
can you help us or provide us something to clean it up so we don't walk on glass? And I like how he came in with like a dustpan and a broom. It was like, yeah. no, you don't understand. We need a <laughs> shovel. <laughs> so yeah, the shower was out of commission that night. So we went to the, well, at least I did, went to the expo the next day without having showered, which was. Yeah, I, I got lucky that I showered beforehand. Yeah. But we did. But we went into the park. But I wasn't that sweaty because it was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was. It, you know, they they cleaned it up and put a shower curtain in, and it was fine by mid afternoon. But that first day, I may have been a little ripe. Well, this is very fascinating from an animation it sure perspective. Is. Um, we did get a little bit of stuff out of Comic Con. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, we're recording this Saturday at eleven a.m., so not a lot of the big panels have really mm -hmm. started yet. Those, you know come around today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but what we do have is from DC and Warner Brothers uh, Animation, Sweet, we do have... now a huge fan of. We do have four new films. First, we have uh, Gaslight, which yeah. is really good. Um, it's basically, uh, Batman is in Victorian London, Ooh. and he has to solve the case of Jack the Ripper. Weird. So it's like yeah. a time travel Batman? Well, no, it's not a time travel. It's just a one-off graphic novel. Okay. That they're making into a movie. That's good. I'm kind of... I need some stuff outside of the whole Dark Knight way. And, and I heard they were doing... Too dark I heard me. they were doing uh, Batman the Long Halloween and Batman Noir. Mm -hmm. Both of those are just standalone graphic novels. Cool. I'm down for that. That's yeah, I, I love, I I love like. the graphic novels just because yeah. they are standalone and they're perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a self-contained story. That's right. it. Right. Um, we also have uh, Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay. Really? Which is coming out, so we're getting a Suicide Squad movie, which is... And I'm assuming these are all direct to DVD Blu-ray. I mean, they could be theatrical. We don't know. Okay. It depends on how it gets marketed. Sure. We also have, in 2018, uh, Death of Superman, okay. which is uh, which is great, because I didn't even know that this was happening, and I showed you the thing last yeah. night, The Death and Return of Superman. Mm -hmm. It's basically, part one is The Death of Superman, part two, which comes out in 2019, is the reign of Superman. Right. So it's basically the death and return of Superman. Okay, sweet. And remember all those uh, guys that I had movies? Yeah. Um, we also got uh, a first look at the new Big Hero 6 series. Yeah. Uh, when we were at D23 and we posted the intro for the for the show, mm -hmm. um, and then we got the a sneak peek of part of the, I guess, first episode Probably, at Comic-Con, and we put that on our Instagram, so you can find both of those on our Instagram. It looks good. It looks like it has the same kind of personality that the movie did. So Yeah, they got the same cast, like so that. that's that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, we also got a new scene from Star vs. Force of Evil, and everybody's... Season 2? Uh, season 3. Season 3? Season 3. Oh, wow. Yeah, and everybody lost their minds because it shows Tom and Star dancing, and it's like, right. guys, it's a... It's a flashback. So that already happened. Yeah. Nice. It's and you can tell it's a flashback. I mean, the way that they both like mm -hmm. neither one of them. Yeah. It's like yeah. guys, it's a flashback. Come on, we. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh my gosh, they're gonna get back together. <laughs> it's like no, they're not. Just come down. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, also, in a heartbeat. Yes. Finally. Yes. Has a premiere date. Release date. So it's gonna come out July thirty first mm -hmm. online. Which is a week from when this episode comes out, I believe. Yep. It's a Monday, right? Next Monday. Yeah. So, awesome. So that'll be on our, like, like we can... That'll well, be on our... When we re no, I guess we won't be able to watch it and then record and then put it... Oh, we'll, we'll do one. We'll do a Cartoon Cafe. That will probably be uh, okay. up that Friday. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like it. We'll do a special review for that. So make sure you guys are uh, watching for that, following along with the creators. Oh, maybe. Friends. Maybe, maybe not. Because we may have that other thing coming on that Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who knows? We'll, we will do a cartoon cafe over in a heartbeat. Right. Right. And hopefully maybe, you know, in a month or so, maybe we can get Beth and Esteban back on. Yeah, definitely. I'd That'd be that. pretty cool. I'd love it. Um, I, know you really... just, I know you just finished that commission. Uh, yes. Just finished a fun little mashup of Woody and Buzz Lightyear and Dr. Facilier from Princess and the Frog Boys. <laughs> so kind of like the Rowdy so Rough in, Boys? In the style of the Powerpuff Girls. In, in, kind of like what? The Rowdy Rough Boys. Or are they like boys in the Powerpuff Yeah, they, they're, they're the boy versions of... Mm. Yeah, because you have... Uh, they, they, but they're... 
bad boys because i mean powerpuff girls is sugar spice and everything nice mm -hmm. and uh the rowdy rough boys is snips and snails and puppy dog tails right so. that makes sense i was reading a little bit about powerpuff girls because i never watched the show but the creator of it lauren um, faust originated it uh, as a college she, project she created it? kind of like in a heartbeat i, she was uh, a I can't story remember board the artist artists. I think it was a guy that created it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I think she did a lot of the storyboards. Anyway, the the original title for his student film that he made that became the Powerpuff Girls was <laughs> Whoop Ass Stew, which I think is Whoop great. Ass Stew. Yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I that that awesome. should be the name of our our second podcast. Welcome to Whoop Ass Stew. <laughs> we we'll change the name of Cartoon Cafe to Whoop Ass Stew. That would be dope. <laughs> I like it. I just thought that was cool. So yeah, fun mashup. I also, you know, on our Wonder Woman episode, I revealed that, holy crap, I'm in love with Wonder Woman. So I started reading my very first Wonder Woman comic this week, and it's awesome. Uh, really you started with the Woman. George Perez run? Yes. Back in, is it 86? I think it starts in 86 and goes to the early 90s at yeah. some point. There's like 14 volumes, graphic novels. So I'm going to just start with volume one and see how long I have. See if I want to go through the whole thing. It's really good so far. Yeah, I have a lot of the uh, George Perez Teen Titan run. Ooh, so. Teen Titans? Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. So I could see myself getting into that, too. Yeah, sweet, it's pretty dude. cool. Nice. Starfire is uh, old 80s Starfire oh, with yeah. huge hair. It's like, nice. poof, out. It's nice. awesome. Yeah, the all the Amazons in this uh, comic are... Look like the, Ripley. the hair. It, it it's it's half like ancient Greek looking, half you know eighties hairband looking. Nice. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Wonder Woman has like she's got a bandana on. There's looks like Axl Rose. Going on and, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Steve Trevor looks like a uh, Tommy Shaw from Sticks. No. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's got the feathered hair. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's very very feathered. Mm -hmm. All right, we're ready to. I'm good, man. All right. Well, Gavin, what did we watch this week? We watched DreamWorks Megamind. Another uh, July. We did no marketing for Justice July. I know. And right? it's Justice July. It is. Justice July. Another superhero movie. Uh, interestingly enough, this is the third highest animated superhero movie behind The Incredibles. Grossing, grossing animated? Yeah, grossing. Okay. What did I say? You just, you just said third highest. It's so high. Uh, yeah, third highest grossing superhero animated movie behind The Incredibles and Big Hero 6. So it did very well. It made uh, uh, $340 million in the box office. Nice. So pretty well. When did this movie come out? Was it 2010? 2010, which it was up against tons of competition. It was the sixth highest uh, grossing animated film of that year. Let me just read you the competition. Is that Tangled? That year. Yep. How to Train Your Dragon, Toy Story 3, Tangled, Despicable Me, Shrek Ever After, Shrek Forever After, sorry, Legend of the Guardians, Secret World of Arietti, and The Illusionist all came out in 2010. What's The Illusionist? Uh, it's on our list, you'll see in, in another month or so. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's good. It's French. Oh, yeah, I think I pushed for that one over the uh, the other ones. The Triplets of Belleville. The Triplets of Belleville. Yeah, I think you'll like that one better. It looked cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So yeah, it, it came out amongst a huge uh, competitive market. I had that seen year. the majority. And of it those came out movies. after Despicable Me, and so a lot of people feel like this was kind of the piggyback film, even though films like this are you know done over years, years in advance. But you know, you know, especially in the summer, it seems like there's always two movies that it's like these two studios are putting out the same movie, and to have two movies about supervillains in the animated genre come out in the same summer. It's kind of like, eh, you get it. But well, I think they this, are very I think, different. I think this one did it better than just Pickle. And Me one too. of them has Minion, and the other one has Minions. minions you know? Yeah. Like, come on, guys. Did you guys, like, did somebody get fired at one and go work for the other? Like, let's like, make hey, it Minions. Still this. Uh, yeah, so basically this is a story where they're using kind of classic superhero things. Well, it, it's and... literally the... I mean, origin of Superman. Yeah, Superman. And it's as, as if somebody also crash landed on Earth at the same time Superman did from another planet. So he's an alien and, you know, he doesn't have powers, but he has supervillain intellect. So he builds things to, yeah, it's basically like the origin of their rivalry. 
and you know Metro Man, who was their version of Superman, uh, is you know, always wins because he's good. And Mega Mind, who is like the super villain here, always loses. Comes close sometimes, but always yeah, loses. I like his like <laughs> he would win some. I would almost win some. Yeah. That was good. There, there is good. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, I when I saw that it was Will Ferrell, I was kind of like, eh. yeah, yeah. but honestly, the voice, like the act, the voice acting in the story was so good that I completely forgot that it was yeah. Will Ferrell. Well, now um, Brad Pitt, on the other hand, uh -huh. that I was like, all right, Brad Pitt, did you try? Did you just come in and read some lines? Because that's uh, what it sounded like. Like his character, there's not much asked of that character. I know, but kind of like it's like. At least maybe put a little. He's little better in Sinbad. It. Yeah, we, need to see Sinbad. <laughs> we do. So, um, interestingly enough, on Will Ferrell, this at the time became Will Ferrell's highest-grossing movie, and then he beat it with the Lego Movie. So, Will Ferrell's two highest-grossing movies. This are really animated shocked movies? me. I found this out this morning. Are Leg the Lego Movie and this movie? Mega That's Mario. awesome. That's crazy and awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Tina Fey plays the reporter. Um, so basically it's those three characters and... Roxanne. Roxanne Ritchie. Yeah. Yeah. Which is another kind of... I was of surprised they reference. didn't do a Roxanne. Like, we need to talk about all the references in the movie because that's one of them. It's because all of the characters in Superman stories, it's always like double... Well, that, that's just that's just all comics. Oh, is it? Period. I knew it was... Particularly prominent in Superman, so you have Lois Lane and Lex Luthor, and yeah, Clark we, you've Kent. got so you have all you've the got same Peter Parker. Oh yeah, Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Yeah. Um, Fing Fang Foom. That's a dragon. It's <laughs> a triple. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dum Dum Dugan. Dum Dum Dugan. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a, there's a lot. Yeah. It happens so quite it, often. it happens. So Roxanne Ritchie is a clear reference to that sort of thing. Um, we saw a Watchman reference with the little frowny yeah, face he's got the frown that he's face wearing. Um, let's see, I wrote a list. Well, I mean, Watchmen. his like his name, is Hal Stewart. Oh yeah, yeah, which, which is, is Green Lantern, which is right? Hal Jordan Green Lantern and John Stewart Green Lantern. Right. They just put them together. Perfect. Um, I mean, obviously, Metro Man is a clear reference to Superman. Superman. Metro City, Metropolis. Metropolis. You mean Metrocity? Metrocity, Metropolis. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, the they had the Obama posters, basically a spoof <laughs> of them, but as like, Mega Mind. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was good. Um, uh, you said Green Lantern, Roxanne Ritchie. Oh, there was the Donkey Kong scene. Yeah, there too. was Donkey Kong. There scene. probably is a lot of other things in there, but you know, at a certain point, you know, twenty minutes. Well, goes they, by, they like, basically oh, they thing. basically kind of like build the Hall of Justice. Yeah, that's true. For for uh, Metro Man. Mm -hmm. And, then and, and, and it is life. basically like the death and return of Superman. Kind that, of, that's that's yeah. another reason Except why I showed you that. Yeah. yeah, that's why I showed you that. Because it's like, look, he dies, but then he comes back, but he's got a beard. Right. He's got long hair and a beard. And then he comes right. back with long hair and a beard. So, I mean, kind of the basics of the story is Megamind decides he's got to be evil because that's where his skill set lies. Metro Man gets sick of the drudgery of winning all the time, basically, and fakes his death. And then over the course of the movie, Megamind learns maybe he's meant to be good and kind of turns into the hero at the end, um, which I thought was a neat little twist. And we find out that Metro Man faked his death and he's still around, but he's kind of just checked out, so he's useless. And then in the meantime, he creates, by mistake, a new villain. And so, I don't know, I feel like all these little plot points... They, His they worked Titan. for me. Yeah, Titan. Titan. I uh, like how it's T-I-G-H-T-E-N. Well, like yeah, every, at first it was Titan, but I think it was him because he's he was just misspelling it. Probably, well, because when, uh, well, when uh, Jonah Hill Titan... Uh -huh. uh, uses his laser eyes and spells out Titanville. Yeah. He spells it Titanville. Right, with an I-G-H. I-G-H, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, but every other time we see the word Titan, it's spelled correctly. So I don't know what that was. That was weird it to does. me. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, Maybe so, Jonah Hill's just dumb. Or Hal Stewart. Yeah. Um, yeah, the voice cast was, was, it was major stars in this. I don't always, I didn't feel like it was the perfect cast. I thought Will Ferrell did a great job. I thought David Cross was amazing. David Cross was fantastic. 
Um, the rest was, it was passable for me. Um, yeah, I mean, Tina Fey has, like, that could have been anybody. She didn't really yeah, bring anything to the character. She didn't bring any of that Tina Fey comedy. She's yeah, I wish, her, I wish she would have had a little bit more J.K. Simmons. We had, oh, yeah, like, JK. One, one good scene with him. Mm-hmm. Um, like, when, uh, uh, at the end, when Minion breaks mm-hmm. uh, Megamind out at the end, yeah. and he's like, good luck, you two! I thought yeah. that was good. I was like, nice. He's like, he's all tied up. He's like, good yeah. luck! We love JK. Um, yeah, so, I mean, to me, I thought the, the movie was really entertaining. I liked that, okay, it's like, yeah, we're using classic superhero tropes here. There's nothing really new. We're not breaking any new ground, but we're going to mix and match this in a way that makes it interesting what did you think about the plot and the story did it work for you yeah i mean it like i said it it was very much superman yeah and i mean there's nothing wrong with that but i mean i I like the movie just fine Mm -hmm. um i would like for them to do a sequel but i'm also like what do you do with a sequel Right. I mean, other than just kind of like shoehorn it in, kind of like well, with hopefully Dis- you don't do what they did with Despicable. Yeah, exactly. Like with, with, with Despicable Me, because you're like, yeah. well, I mean, it was good. I mean, it's good as a standalone, and you really don't leave it open right. for anything. You, you self-contained story. Yeah. But I yeah, I, th- I thought it was okay. I mean, I it's not anything that I'm like I gotta go buy this now. Right. But yeah, I mean, it was it was it was passable. Yeah. No, I mean, I, mean, I, I thought that basically the same. Um, I, I was probably a little more entertained by it, but, um, I mean, I did like, I did like all the references. The references were really the good. The references were solid. And I mean, I think Megamind's really funny and Minion's really funny. I think at times Titan's funny or before he's Titan, he's funny. Um, oh yeah. When he's just how yeah, when he's, he's trying, how. trying to get on the, go on a date. This is a classic example though, of where I think because this is now seven years old and I'm already seeing cracks in the animation. You know, when it came out, I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh. This is, like that year we had Toy Story 3, Tangled, um, How to Train Your Dragon, some of the most jaw-dropping animation we'd seen up to that point. And I felt like this stood up to those as far as animation. And watching it again yesterday, I was like, ooh, okay, we're way beyond this now. Like we've really moved past this level of animation. So I think in some ways it's starting to be dated already. Well, I mean, I, I like a, we, we talked about it yesterday. Like the textures in the movie look really, the textures really, are good. Still really good. Like yeah. all the glass shattering and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then you even still see the little bits of glass, like when uh, Titan's moving the big tower and mm-hmm. you still see them falling and sparkling yeah, the whole way down. Sun, yeah. It looked really, really good. It still looks yeah. good. Oh yeah. It still looks really good. I agree. Um, it, it, it was, top notch when it came out and it's still close to top notch now the the hair is uh, you know is, is pretty good it's not the greatest you, you can see where they were trying with oh, the yeah. hair they you can see where like where, where they were almost getting it mm-hmm. because like uh with uh what, what was his name when he was the nerdy dude which oh bruce was it bruce, bruce. what was his name Anyway, well, if it was Bruce, then there's Bruce Banner for you. Yeah, because um, yeah. he even got the green turtleneck. <laughs> um, well, when he's yeah, when he's the blonde dude, yeah. I was like, okay, kind of cool. It looks like the kid from uh, Meet the Robinsons. Um, a little bit, a little bit. When, when he's like that, I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I, I can see the hair there. And then with mm-hmm. uh, Roxanne, I was like, okay, yeah, I get, get a little bit. Yeah. But then they didn't do a lot with it. Like I thought. Uh, What's his uh, Jonah Hill's little little fro thing? I thought that was mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah, like it never moved. It never fro. moved. Yeah, exactly. Some of those didn't have the dynamics that you know something like Merida from Brave had, or um, we were talking about good movies earlier. Um, Rapunzel's about, like, hair and Entangled. So yeah, I mean there there are some limitations there, but yeah, we talked about it when we watched it. The textures are still yeah, really they still good. look fantastic. Everything looks realistic as far i mean within that universe they look realistic the characters i was kind of like i mean there's really only four characters in the movie pretty much that's it yeah the rest of them are very ancillary characters and you can tell they didn't spend a lot of time right on the ancillary characters which again is my biggest pet peeve it's like put the same amount of work in your background characters 
that you put into your, you know, your main characters. As far as the animation quality? Exactly. Because oh. there's a couple of them that are kind of running around, and you're just like, okay, yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> you, you don't really have a face, but whatever. We're talking about, like, some of the prison guards and, like, pr other prisoners and, like, in scenes like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, just, like, background characters. Like, all okay. the people, like, in the background. Like, unless they're, like, like right on Hall the camera. Like yeah, unless they're, like, in that front row, you can kind of see, and you're like, okay, yeah. But the ones behind them mm -hmm. just look like they're, like, copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. And I'm yeah. like, I understand that that's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's still like, well, just... I mean, if this is if this is the movie and this is what you're doing and this is what you you're gonna be remembered for, maybe make your characters maybe draw a different face for a each character. A lot of time, though, it comes down to I would imagine it comes down to budget. Yeah, I know. Don't have the time but and resources to animate all that. But yeah, one day they're gonna have a fully animated movie that you want. And you're going to just lose it. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, they did it for me. I mean, not even Your Name does it. I mean, Your Name did a good job. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not like uh, uh, Suka Garaki, mm -hmm. the one that I watch now, mm -hmm. where it's all 3D models. And they're like, gay, 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 look like <laughs> robots walking around. And you're like, oh, get it off the screen. That's <laughs> uh, hilarious. Um, music by Hans Zimmer. I thought the music was pretty good. It yeah, didn't really it, jump out. No, but, but I mean, it when, well. when you, you can kind of tell that there's like the superhero element music in there where you're like, da -da 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 -da, and you're like, okay, okay. yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I thought, I thought it was good. Lots of, they were like jammed a lot of classical rock oh, in yeah. there. Yeah, the soundtrack is filled with like ACDC and Aerosmith and good. even Michael Jackson at the end. Michael Jackson, uh, yeah. we get some, some Guns N' Roses. Electric Light Orchestra in there, Guns N' Roses. It's a pretty... The Beatles one. Pretty rock... It's not the Beatles. It's, uh, it's a pretty rockin' soundtrack. So, I mean, I thought it was good. It was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I'm entertained by this movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's entertaining. Um, and here's, here's what I... It also goes back to some discussions we've had previously on the show... I feel like this movie was much more adult than most oh, it is. animated movies. It's not movies. a kid's movie. I wouldn't call it a kid's movie at all. There's there's lots of violence, and there's not a lot of kid humor in it at all, really. I mean, I can't imagine what a kid would really clamor for in that movie. Maybe his little minion bots? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, there weren't any fart jokes in there. No fart jokes. There's no real gag humor in it. So I felt like it was a very adult movie so i mean for that reason i wouldn't really recommend it for kids because i just don't think they'd be interested no and for me it's a much more grown-up kind of movie with more grown-up references you know references to kind of old school superhero stuff that you know older people would know about so it doesn't hit as broad of an audience as a lot of other animated movies that you know we talk about on this show but for the audience it does hit I, I think it's a very entertaining movie. Yeah, I like it. yeah, I'll, I, it, it's entertaining. Again, it's not one of those where I'm like, I have to go out and buy this. It's yeah, not like uh, uh, Hotel Transylvania where I watch right. it. and I'm like, I have to own this movie now. Yeah. Um, or what was it? Um, Spirited Away, where Spirited you're away. driving home and you're on your phone. I was on my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was cool. Um, are you ready to? I mean, I really, really don't have anything much yeah, to it's say weird. on it's it. Like, it's yeah. it's one of those where you're like, go see it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's not bad. It's definitely worth a watch. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, and a lot of people may want to buy it. I bought it. I was entertained by it. Charlie loves it. Like, I mean, she, I brought maybe, it maybe it'll be another... I shocked that she just flipped over. I mean, maybe it'll be another one where maybe on a second watch through, maybe mm -hmm. I'll like it more. Yeah. Um, and maybe just go in just looking for those old sure. comic references. Let's, let's, let's talk about one more thing just for a second before we go into the uh, rating. I want to talk a little bit about character design because I think they did some really cool things with the with Metro Man, Mega Mind, his minion, and then Titan. I really love their outfits. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad you didn't mention uh, Roxanne because she was oh, she's she was, very boring. She was stiff, like the characters in Frozen. Um, the, Suck it, the, nerds. The textures and design work in their costumes are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Titan's costume with the sequence that you can like individual sequence that you can that see you can and see. give it a little sparkle unbelievably cool i love it well i like the metro man because he's got like those uh 
old school Nightwing yeah, and Ultimate Savage, War, Ultimate like Warrior, Warrior tassels. tassels. Yeah, those are great. They're, they were great. On his gloves. Uh-huh. They're so good. Well, and, and on his boots, too. He's got oh, them on yeah, the boots. Yeah, on the boots, because when he flexes his calves, they're like, fly yeah. out. Which is, which is very much like old school Nightwing oh, from... Yeah. You know George Perez's run. He right. gave him tassels so and everything cool. like that. So cool. Yeah, I, I really liked that. I loved Minion because basically Minion was just like a little kind of piranha fish kind of character. Yeah. But Mega Mind designs this whole like mech body for him, so he's like this little fish ball head on top of this awesome robot structure. Yeah, he's got like the fur and, and everything. Yeah, he's got like big fur shoulder pads and, and his movement is really cool and the things that he can do is really cool. He's a great sidekick. Yeah, he's, and he's, he's also really like good. totally loyal, like, you know, by his side the whole time. Yeah, he's like he's like Freaking sidekick awesome. best friend. Yeah. Because he's very kind of, I kind of got like a Pegasus vibe. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. because they're like, kind of like with uh, his, oh, we forgot the Marlon Brando. Yeah, Jarrell. He's yeah, totally Jarrell. He's completely Jarrell. Yeah, I'm your space <laughs> From the old uh, Christopher Reeves movies. Yeah, fantastic. He got paid a million dollars for one day of shooting. Who did? Marlon Brando. Brando. Of course, he was he there did. for one day. Of course, million dollars. Of course, and they're like Jeebus Christmas. He's icon Marlon mm-hmm. Brando, and he's probably the ultimate Hollywood diva of all time. There, I'm not going to go into stories about Marlon Brando. I'll sidetrack. Um, just, just look up stories about Mutiny on the Bounty and and his hat. You'll, you'll find him <laughs> the greatest diva of all time. You were saying, oh yeah, so uh, Jarrell. But the design work of Minion, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Like the depth in the water that he was in and everything. When something would fall in there, like his car keys. Or I, I like what they did with so the uh, like with Mega Mind. Like when he was he was fighting Titan. And like part of his suit gets ripped, mm-hmm. and like you can see like part of this like e- it's weird because like it would like s- part of the the ripped cloth would like flow over and then it would flow back, mm-hmm. kind of like an actual piece of cloth would. Right. So it would be like in here one scene, here the next scene, yeah. And like it was, it, was, it looked like real cloth. And it was really good. It's really well done. It even had shadowing I on agree. it. And I was like, good lord, yeah. guys. So I, I, on put, that level, put less work into that. And maybe some more work into those background oh characters. My gosh, no, we want the maybe make Roxanne not look like garbage. Yeah, she's, she's very is. robotic. And then and I, but I've noticed that that happens a lot. When you do these 3D type shows, yeah, they're still working or not on 3D, that. like these CG type shows, mm-hmm. like um, I always say 3D, it's stupid. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, it's all but same. like even in Troll Hunters, um, oh, yeah. what's her face? The, the, girl. the girl. Claire? Claire. She's kind of robotic sometimes too. Right. And I'm That's like. That's the difficult thing with CG that they still are learning how to. And do Ruby. Well. Uh, if Anytime you get into the first couple characters. seasons of Ruby, yeah. they're like. Right. Yeah, it's that's tough. Arms out to their like arms at their sides. Their their fingers are like spread wide. They're like, this is how we stand, like real humans. That's <laughs> uh, so true. But anyway, I just wanted to get that in because I feel like those character designs are awesome, and I love the the blue color of Mega Mind's skin and how mixed with the black. He still has like a little rosiness in his cheek. Yeah, and, like, and on his ears. And his ears, like, they kind yeah. of fade like, into like almost a little purple uh-huh. kind of color. They looked good. He, it, he was drawn very really, well. Yeah, it's really a clever color palette that they went for, and I, and I like it. I think they nailed that. So I wanted to get that in. Alright, want to rate it? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give it four different pints. Nice! Uh, I think I'm Because right like I said, I mean, you. I can't really think of anything wrong with the movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just one of those where I'm like, okay, I watched it. But I mean, it, it's it not loses bad. It is a full star because somebody 150 people back didn't have a face. Exactly. <laughs> if that person would have had a face, then have five stars. Uh, I think I'm right with you. I think for me, this is a solid four. Totally entertaining. Uh, give it a watch. I don't. I didn't look up if it's available on any of the streaming services because we own it. Um, but it it is one of those DreamWorks films that I feel like uh, it was not it was not on made. Netflix. I it don't know about Hulu. Yeah, maybe Hulu or Amazon. I'm not sure. But either way, you can probably find it cheap somewhere right now. Yeah, you can probably get 3.99 HD on Amazon right. Prime. Yeah. So do it. It's worth a watch. Um, yeah. So cool. Top five. All right. Top five. And now for another top five. All right, so this one's a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't really seen 
this, like, hadn't seen Mega Mind before we watched this. Right. And I thought it was literally going to be Brad Pitt versus Will Ferrell mm -hmm. the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. So that's why for this one, we decided to do our top five animated rivalries. Right. And this is this is a movie about rivalry because the whole premise is based on a rivalry. Yeah. And then in order and to then kind he of gets save sad. himself, he tries to create a new rival and, you know, things happen because of that. So it is rivalries. Yeah. But yeah, it isn't like one You know what we didn't talk rivalry. about? What? That is, um it's 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 cool. it's it's kind of funny that um Metro Man gets bored with everything because it's the same old song and dance mm -hmm. with Megamind. And then once Megamind kills Metro Man, he's like, he's bored too because there's no more song and dance. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he needs something. Right. But then it's like, what is Megamind going to do now? Say, well, now, that, now that he's the hero. Yeah, that's true. So he's the hero. Because I mean, the, the only bad guy that we ever saw was Megamind. We don't know if there's anybody else here. Mm-hmm. That would... I mean, I, I think in the world of superheroes, there's always the premise that a new villain will arise. And they say it one time in the movie. They said anytime a, a villain arises, a good will rise to meet it. So conversely, I think the opposite is kind of assumed to be true. Um, if, if your protector quells the villain, then eventually another villain will rise up and try to assume that mantle. So... I, th I think, you know, yeah, there may be a, a latency period where he's yeah. just kind of, like, grooving as this new hero role, but he may become bored. Fix, fixing stuff in the city yeah, and everything like stuff, that. You know, dehydrating the garbage uh, like he does. And, uh, you know, maybe a new... Maybe, that, that, maybe that's your sequel. New villain arises, and now he's got to take on, for real, the actual role of being the hero the of hero. the city. Okay. That could be a good, good maybe. sequel. Well, if they were going to do it, it wouldn't take him seven years i don't know maybe i mean incredibles is taking how many years to make yeah but that's so, yeah but that's pixar well, so and what's your point they no i mean they like to they're they're uh, money grabbers <laughs> no, well, right. well, they would think they'd do it sooner then right? yeah exactly uh anyway uh top five top. <laughs> top five rivalries is what we decided to do all right gavin so what do we have for our number five Number five, from a television show which is near and dear to both of our hearts and we're eagerly anticipating season two. That's right. It's Rugrats. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Troll Hunters. <laughs> and it's none other than our protagonist, Jim, and the evil Mr. Strickler, who becomes Principal Strickler. Who almost, also a changeling. Who almost becomes his dad. Who almost becomes his <laughs> stepdad. And that would have been awesome. That's a fantastic rivalry. It goes throughout the entire length of that first season. I well, well, not, well, not, not the entire length, because, I mean, for part of it, we're like, okay, cool, because Jim doesn't know. We know, but then Jim doesn't know yeah, about Mr. Strickler. That's fair. That's fair. The audience sees the audience, them as yeah. pitted against each other, though, from the beginning. Because you can see Strickler, like, starting to figure things out. Yeah, like when on. he sees the ambulance, and he's like, what the heck is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we love that rivalry. I thought it was really good, and it plays well with... The fact that there are other like main villains in it, yeah. like, he's kind of like the mastermind in direct conflict with um, Jim. So that was really good. All right, number five, none other than give me four. Sorry, number number four. four. <laughs> good job. Uh, I was like number five, Jim and Mister Strickler. <laughs> number four is none other than Batman and the Joker. Ba -da 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 -da. In my mind, from my perspective, being a bit of an outsider to the world of comics and superheroes, that to me is probably the most iconic rivalry in yeah. comics. Like, I can't think I mean, of anything else super, that would be close. Superman and, and Lex Luthor? And Lex Luthor, I guess. But yeah, maybe. But I feel like... Yeah, but it's not as iconic as yeah, Batman and Batman the Joker. Because I feel like they're a little more equally matched. Yeah, and they're completely intertwined with each other, too. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, there's... Uh, well, it was the Joker... Isn't the Joker the one that killed his parents? Uh, I mean, it depends. Uh, it depends on in what... In the first Tim Burton movie... Yeah, yeah it depends that, on what continuity you do. Way. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's that, that whole thing. Yeah. Which, which alternate universe are we in? Um, okay. Well, yeah. I know that they have kind of an intertwined uh, story and history. and So, yeah, that's a 
That's a great rivalry. And as far as I remember, it's been years since I watched Batman the Animated Series. But I feel like they play it well in they that do. series. Like, you feel that rivalry in there. So, I think mean, it's, it's a good, good it, is, it is very good. Um, probably, not really from a comic perspective, but, like, from a like animated series perspective. Mm-hmm. The rivalry between the two is, I mean, is, is iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we even have a part where, like, the Joker wants to, like, wants to defeat Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, we even have that in the Killing Joke, um, right. where he does all this stuff to get Batman, and at the end of the movie, he's like, "All right, I mean, I can't like we complete each other. Right. We're like yin and yang. I mean, if you die, then I'm done. Yeah, because I mean, you're the only one I want to finish in, all this with. Mm-hmm. So that's why, kind of at the end of the Killing Joke, it's very ambiguous. It's like, did Batman kill the Joker? at the end, or did they decide, you know what, let's quit and let's walk off together. Right. So you're like, you know what happened? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the same dilemma that Metro Man and Megamind came exactly. up against. Megamind didn't ever think he was actually going to beat Metro Man. And, and that's like when he does, and he's like, wait, Copper? How is it? What? <laughs> like, I've given you a penny before. <laughs> it's really funny. All right, number three. Ooh, from Disney. This is our only Disney pick. No, well, here's the thing. There's not a, there's not a lot of rivalries in Disney. Yeah, we can't because a few. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, not... Disney Disney kind of like at the end, it's like done. Yeah, like because Disney is like oh, let's let's kill it and, and heroes, but there's not like what you would consider real rivalries. Yeah, I think this one qualifies though. Uh, from Lion King, Scar and Simba. Yeah, because there is kind of a long lasting butting of heads. I mean, originally there's a manipulation on Scar's part, and yeah, I, I think it's a great rivalry. It's like and it ends in an epic kill, battle. Kills his dad, mm-hmm. banishes him, mm-hmm. takes over his home, wrecks it, wrecks it, <laughs> and then they have a fight at the end. Yeah, and then still Hits tries it. to back slaps his mom, right? Like, gives his mom a back paw, mm-hmm. and then still tries to frame him as the murderer. Exactly, of his dad. And yeah, so it, he man, he's evil. It's not like oh, I took your voice away. <laughs> I mean, it's not not like that. <laughs> not anything boring. Uh, that's funny. So yeah, that's our Disney pick. I think it's a that's a good one. I I've always liked that uh, rivalry that they have. And God, that movie's so good. It's so good. We'll talk about more about Lion King in our D twenty three bonus episode. Yeah. So tune into that. All right. Um, next up, number two, from the world of Looney Tunes and Warner Brothers Animation. Oh, wait, that was actually a Looney Tunes. Dang it. that was it. (laughs) None other than Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, who are kind of a hilarious rivalry. Uh, it's more of a comedy rivalry. They're not... Yeah, you wanted, you, you wanted Bugs Bunny and Well, if we were doing... A Bugs Bunny thing. Yeah, I kind of felt like Elmer Fudd, but I get the Daffy Duck thing. I had just forgotten that they kind of fought against, like, you know, rabbit season, duck season, rabbit, you know, trying to get the hunter to hunt the other one. Yeah. I get that. Uh, I had forgotten about it. My, my personal top pick for Looney Tunes rivalries would be Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. But you said that was an arrival. Well, yeah, it's, it's not a, it's it's not so a rivalry. One-sided. It's, it's one sided because <laughs> it's a chase. It's yeah, a chase. exactly. Like, because. Wiley Coyote never wins. Right, right. And that's like, for it to be a rivalry, it's like, mm-hmm. you have to go back and forth. Yeah. And that's what happens with like, Bugs and Daffy. They do go back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I guess the same with Elmer Fudd, because sometimes he does get Bugs. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, but I, I don't know, because like, Bugs Bugsy usually, because like, Bugs Bugsy usually like, because like, he'll like, knock him out and it looks like he's like, dragging him by, like he'll drag him by the ears or whatever. Yeah. But then Bugs will be like, yeah. Daffy gets his duck bill blown, blown off so i think he gets it more often but i th- i think we just kind of went with the more iconic here and bugs and daffy are like the faces of looney tunes pretty much yeah so they're kind of like the mickey and donald of that world so yeah that's our number two we have quite a few honorable, honorable mentions. mentions um so i'm going to go through the list quickly if i can the pines twins and little gideon little gideon this is a great one kenny and cartman from south park Obviously. Well, was it Kyle and Cartman? Oh, is it Kyle and Cartman? Yeah, Kyle and Cartman. Oh, 
See, that's why I was confused, because you said Kenny. No, I, think, I said Kyle. I, I think you may have misspoke, and you said Kenny. Josh has never misspoke. It, okay, okay, Josh. Uh, but that's why I was confused. That's why I was asking all oh, the yeah, questions. Oh, yeah, no, Kyle, Kyle. Okay. Because I don't remember. I watched the first season of it 20 years ago, and that was it. So. Back when it was construction and paper. I watched the, yeah, and I watched the movie. So I'm going to rewrite that. Kyle and Cartman there we from go. South Park. All right, Goku and Vegeta from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Buzz Lightyear and Evil Emperor Zerg from the Toy Story franchise. Good one. Sure. <laughs> uh, Jack Skellington and Oogie Boogie from Nightmare Before Christmas. Sure. Sully and Randall from Monsters, Inc. That was my pick, cause, but I didn't know who anybody's name was. Yeah, that's a good one. Porco and Curtis from Porco Rosso. Yep. That's a great one, too. They have that great fist fight. I love it. Cinderella and the Stepsisters. Uh, my my other pick from Warner would be Tom and Jerry. So okay. I think that's a good rivalry. Uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle and Boris and Natasha from Moose and the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. <laughs> Inspector Gadget and Dr. Claw. Go, go, Gadget. <laughs> good one. Uh, Peter Griffin and the Chicken, which Charlie and I love. We love us some Family Guy. Uh, also from Family Guy, Stewie and Lois. Yeah, for the first the like six seasons, they have a serious rivalry. Uh, from, but then he just gave up, you know. Yeah, he just kind of like, it, and then he, he hated Brian, and now they're like best buds. Yeah, it, I mean it's gone all directions. From The Simpsons, Bart and Sideshow Bob, which I I really wanted that to be in our top five, but didn't make it. And then, and you're gonna have to help me say the name of the second person, Kim Possible and, and Doctor Doctor Draken. Draken. Okay, I did. I, couldn't read my writing there. Okay. So Fantastic. lots of rivalries. We probably missed lots of others. Yep. But, but we just kept writing and writing and writing and we were like, okay, we need to rank these. So yeah, those are our I forgot who our number one words. was. Really? Well I'm about to say it. You yeah, what's what number one? It? Number one. Samurai Jack uh, and Daku. Yeah. Our favorite animated rivalry. And I still need to see season five. Aku, the shape shifted master of whatever. Yeah, master of darkness. He's so good, man. I love Aku. He's one of my favorite villains of all time. And the long stand. I mean, they're rivals the entire series. So yeah. I love it. My favorite um, episode of Samurai Jack is that two episode arc in season three that's basically tells the whole story of Aku. That's a good one. Dude, I love that story so much. You, you need to watch the... I know, I need, need to, to watch finish five. It. I need to watch five. Are they doing another one or is that it? Like, uh, it's, done. it's It's done. done? It's, okay, it's, cool. it's over. All right, I need to watch it then for sure. I No, I need to just go buy it because I need to own it. I own all the other four seasons. Well, it's not out on like anything other than digital right now. You can't get it. There's no physical yet. Okay. Well, when that's, does, why, like, that's why I'm like, it. why don't you just watch it on my Prime? Yeah. When it does, I'll get it. And but yeah, I'll it. watch yours on Prime. So that's our number one. I I think they're amazing. I, I really wish Gendy would do another show. He's been involved in a lot of projects where he's like like producing a movie. Well, he's, or, he's doing uh, Troll Hunters. What is he doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Troll Hunters. I forget it. Gendy and Guillermo del Toro. I wonder what they're. I wonder who they're going to cast. For Jim, Jim. I, I would Yelchin. imagine it's going to be a voice actor who can who can um, match Anton yeah, Yelchin. Yeah, simulate that, or as close or as possible. That voice, yeah. He has such a like instantly recognizable voice, mm -hmm. and I feel like it has enough character that somebody could mimic it. Yeah, you know, it's not a generic voice, so you could. I bet somebody can voice match it. Yeah, probably. Well. Uh, it's still super sad. I mean, it like yeah. the moment we hear for season three, the moment that we hear, because I still put them in season one and two, oh, yeah. they're so dramatically different. <laughs> and there's a time skip. You never do a time skip between episodes 12 and 13. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. It, uh, it. I just go off of how they labeled it. Yeah, I know. But, and, and I mean, they're so different. It's, but it's, it's one of those like. One and 1.2. Well, I mean, like anime, that would be considered a season. 12 episodes, season, oh, yeah. done. Yeah. But I mean, nowadays, modern cartoons are like, we have to make 24 episodes or else it's not successful. Right. So In in England, um, 12 episodes would be four, four seasons. Four seasons, yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it's, your BBC. It's like, oh, let's see, we have six episodes. 
can we stretch that over two years, please? Is there any way that we can make that happen? <laughs> no, two and a half years, because it's two seasons and a Christmas and special. And a Christmas special, yeah. <laughs> uh, exactly. All right, and the Christmas special is only like 15 minutes longer than a regular episode. Right, right. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's how they do, man. But the quality is there, because they don't water it down with 26 episodes of fluff. Exactly. So, I appreciate that. Now, here's a question. Are we going to do a giveaway? Because we got some D23 swag. Are we going to give a yeah, giveaway for that D23 uh, episode? Yeah, we should pool our swag and see what we can give away um, and maybe come up with something that they can, like if they tune into our episode about D23, maybe we'll drop a secret uh, passphrase or something. And something. They can, they can shout that out, and then maybe we can send some D23 swag. Because I know we got a, a lot of cool D23 swag from Duckburg. Yeah, we got some of that. We got some um, some pins that may be able to be given away. We got some yeah. cool uh, bookmarks with um, awesome artwork on it. Um, I didn't get any bookmarks. I got some other buttons from other people that maybe we can pull into it. Uh, I, I mean, I've got buttons of my painting, which we can give oh, away. Yeah. We got cool stuff. We got We got stuff. We got, stuff. we got stuff. We got stuff. Isn't that what... Uh, That's DJ's Collectibles DJ's in sunny Hanford, <laughs> California. Oh, that's awesome. Tell them Cloud City sent you. Yeah, and I guess you get a free comic, or yeah. DJ like kicks you out of the store. We need to have some hookup like that here. We need to. What what, what do we got around here? Ain't got nothing. How about Sean's Sushi? Well, I, try, I, tried to, I tried to get Tomashi. Get a free roll. Oh, I tried really? to get Tomashi. Yeah. Never Maybe go into Tomashi, say... ASP said, you can get some free edamame. Get a, get a bowl of edamame. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Maybe something. Maybe, yeah, yeah. There's there's some comic shops around. There's really not any, like, animated specific store. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a place in Norm, but that's just, like, an anime store. Yeah. So, I mean, eh. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll work something about Maybe we just do something with DJs. <laughs> Maybe we do some, yeah, go to DJ's Collectibles. Tell them uh, tell animation them stations. stations and see what happens. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> so if uh, you, you know, if you live local or want to drive, maybe go down there. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You got any shout outs for this week? Uh, we did meet Cloud City Cast uh, when we were in yep. California. That was pretty cool. All three of them. Uh, we met uh, good buddy Tony. Yeah, we Simonita. Met Tony Simonetta from uh, Rooster Teeth. Simonetta. Simonetta. Yeah. Uh, who is their product designer now? They're like he's the like, head. He's like the designer. head of their product. Yeah, he's like people. yeah. He's like king of products at Rooster Teeth. Mm -hmm. We hung out with him the whole weekend. Awesome guy. I uh, had a blast with him. Ran into Jared Moriyama. We'll talk more about that on our Mariyama. D23 episode. We got to meet one of our um, list. You got to meet. I've met before one of our listeners and fans, and we're fans of her art, Christina Sakura. Oh, yeah. um, go follow her on Instagram. She's amazing. She's Sakura underscore Christina. Um, for the cutest, best art on. Instagram. If you like cats and mermaids, she's yeah, your girl. She's the one. Uh, uh, met Scott Bromley from the comedy oh, book. Oh, yeah. You yeah. get to run into him. And the Star Wars show. That's so. cool. That's very cool. He probably does not remember because he was so busy. I was there, like, like ran into him. I was like, Scott Bromley? He's like, yeah. He's like, nice to meet you. Nice. Like, love the show. He's like, thanks. And that That's was it. awesome. And then he was, like, running back to work. So, mm -hmm. um, You walked right by Josh Gad, Olaf. Did in, walk in right by Disney Josh Land. Gad. And I Alan Mink did, too, but I missed him. And uh, Alan Minkin walked by, like, oh, that yeah, same day. And I was right. like... Yeah, he was going to Club 33, I yeah. bet, because of where you were sitting. I forgot you you saw him. Um, who, I mean, I got to meet up with other people that I know uh, there. Um, Diz Lights, my friend Angela. Um, she's, I, I she's shook hands with the head of uh, Marvel Animation. You did? That was kind of cool. At, the, at that Marvel oh, Animation cool. I didn't panel. Know that. Yeah. yeah. I was going to give him a card, but it was one of those where it was like, I'll talk more about that. We'll talk yeah, more about that later. On our Disney D23 episode, we'll talk about that. Um, I got to meet up with my friend Caroline, who is a Once Upon a Line art at uh, on Instagram. She's awesome. Go check her out. Um, we also have a giveaway. Else? Oh, yeah. We do have our Just This July giveaway, which we were super awesome and forgot to talk about. Oh, yeah, we did forget to talk about that. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those where we forgot. We recorded those two episodes last so week. So early. Yeah. And... 
then like that week we were like, oh snap, yeah, that's right, like we have a thing, since we've been sitting here doing that. right? Yeah, it's been three weeks. Jeez. Um. So yeah, we do have a Just as July giveaway. We have our final print. We gave one away earlier, mm -hmm. but this is our last print of the X Men class of '92 mm -hmm. from our good buddy uh, JP Perez, mm -hmm. uh, who is Art by JP on Instagram. Yeah, definitely check his stuff out. It's super cool. I actually want to keep it. So <laughs> if people don't do so how what do they they're win? supposed to, uh, all you have to do. I mean, this one is pretty easy. This one, you just go on iTunes and leave a review. That's nice. it. You don't have to follow us. You don't have to do anything special. You just go on. Review us. Review us. Yeah. If you want, maybe send us. Like, if you don't listen to us, maybe, uh, you know, like our post and say, hey, I I submitted a review. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I mean, I can't really find you. Well, we can shout it out and then we yeah, can and then, and then, yeah, email you say, hey. us or whatever when, when the, they, we announce the winner. Yeah. So. So how long do they have to do this? Um, you have until the end of the month. Okay, so the 31st. 31st. Cool. Awesome. Which it's is a, a sweet print. I've seen it. It's really good. It's high quality. Yeah, we've got we've got the photos up on our... Let my 17. Yeah. Uh, we've got the photos up on our Instagram. You can check it out. Yeah, definitely. And we finally got our our website is looking website phenomenal. It looks like a website now. Me and your so, wife spent a lot of time I on know. that. You guys killed it, and it looks great. So... You can scroll through and you can see a little synopsis of every single one of our 52 episodes. Yep. Um, it's impressive. So, yeah. I really out. like the about section. It's been, uh, yeah, the about <laughs> section is probably my favorite part. Yeah. Nice. I haven't checked out the final version of that. Oh, it's I'll good. Have to. Nice. I did your bio. Oh, cool. So, you're welcome. I like it. Awesome. I trust you. I shouldn't. But nope, I you should not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I think that's about it. All right. So, Gavin, where can everybody find you? Everybody can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Gavin Audison Art, and also my new portfolio website, GavinAudisonArt.com. Oh my gosh! Look at you. You fancy, huh? Yeah, I'm getting there. Are like, oh, you fancy? I don't know. I'm fancy. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Josh L. Kane. You can find the show on Instagram at Animation Station Podcast. On Facebook at Animation Station Podcast. On Tumblr at Animation Pod, Station Podcast and on Twitter at Animate Podcast because we had to switch it up. Yeah, stupid Twitter. Stupid characters. Yeah, you can only have X amount. Oh, is so it a dumb. limited length? Yeah, you can only do oh, a limited. Man. Yeah. Oh well. Sucks. Yeah. Is that all the places? That's all you can find. Oh, and our website, AnimationStationPodcast.com, where you can click on the little podcast tab and there's a link to all of our episodes there. You can uh, do the direct download. Mm -hmm. where you just click on it and it'll start playing in the background for you. Mm -hmm. um, you can click on the iTunes link and our Stitcher link as well and nice. find all of us on, again, iTunes and Stitcher. Speaking or your favorite podcatcher. Podcatcher? Sure, why not? That's, that's, that's like, a word. Like a dream catcher, but instead of... Yeah, dream, but it catches pods. pods. <laughs> I like it. Very cool. All right, man. Well, this has been lovely. It has been lovely. It's been so long since we've recorded... I really hope that everything's actually recording. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm stink it was not. <laughs> All right. It's for the Animation Station Podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Gavin. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay gold. <laughs> Made you look. <laughs> you caught me off guard with that yeah. one. Thank you for listening to the Animation Station Podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Animation Station Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Animate Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes. And join the conversation at SecretSuperheroClub.com, where you can connect with our podcast friends, Cloud City Cast, Getting Into Comics, and Sean of the Gathering. Dude, how about those eight hours we spent in airports on Monday? Dude, that was so much fun. <laughs> you caught up on all your downloaded YouTube shows. I read, I I read, a, I read, a, whole, I read a whole web series. <laughs> Seriously? Dang, I didn't know that. We got to watch uh, Real Salt Lake play Manchester United. Manchester! In Denver. That was fun. It wasn't the Hotspurs, because they're like, Yeah, on me. <laughs> they're the Yids. It wasn't Chelsea, it wasn't the Blues. Right. It's like, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. That's how Chelsea does. Yeah. Okay.
That's one of the many chants. Yeah, they got lots of chants over there. Yeah. Well, we don't do that I as don't... much here in America with the sports chanting and, you know. And then you sing your college teams, but not anything yeah. for pro. Yeah, there's really not. I mean, there's not a go your darlings, cowboys, go. Well, I guess that is a thing. Really? That's a thing? They have a song. <laughs> Yes. I only know because Hank Hill from King of the Hill sings uh, it once. The Cowboys have a theme song. Yeah. I did not know that. That's funny. Yeah, it's great. Uh, there's this episode where they go to Dallas Cowboy training camp, mm -hmm. and uh, he takes Bobby, and they go to this like little restaurant or little gas station, mm -hmm. and it's got. And he's like, "Oh, your guys must be great because you know you're close close to the Dallas Cowboys." Like, and the uh, gas station is like, "Man, I don't care at all." Best part about being here is like we're only an hour away from the great state of Oklahoma, <laughs> and he's like, "What?" <laughs> and so the dude starts singing Boomer Sooner, and oh, that's funny. Hank singing the Dallas Cowboys fight song, right? So great! Oh my gosh, that's crazy, man! I, I always forget about King of the Hill. That was a pretty entertaining show. It was pretty good. It was good. It's like it. it's right crap, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's like meant to be crap though. Yeah, so it's good. From, I like, uh, I see, I never watched Beavis and Butthead. That was not my thing. Yeah, no, I didn't like Beavis and Butthead much. They were not my thing at all. Yeah, that was not my deal, but, uh, I like Silicon Valley. That's also Mike Judge. Oh, really? Yep. So huh. you, you can tell that they're, they're, they're still the same. Same kind of humor? humor? Yeah. Oh, well, it's like, like when Matt Stone and Trey Parker do anything. It still, in some ways, feels like South Park all the time. Like basketball? Yes, which is an awesome movie. I love that movie. I like in uh, I like in bigger, longer, and uncut. It's like, should we get our money back like we did for basketball? <laughs> so great. It's a great line. Yeah, it is. Fantastic. <laughs>